Welcome back to the balance Eyes of Teletainment, the Good Morning Niger Show. Now, we don't say um, sometime last year, let me say Nigeria don't overtake India and don't become the capital uh, of poverty for inside we the world. And, uh, well, to, to help commerce Nigeria from poverty, there are some people where they do some kaja things. Different <coughs> people will get their uh, non-government organizations. Now, one of them, now what would they call Feed for Life. Personally, I've been seeing some of the work that they've been doing last year during Easter period, and that made me get some kind of interest for inside waiting than they do. Now, we get two kaja guests where they will be members of Feed for Life Foundation are one of them now. Uh, yet today, I've been bothered within the house with us, and we also get on your as well. Uh, with us, uh, good morning and welcome for welcome to our studio. Good morning. Good morning. Very quickly, let me just speak with you today. Yet today, tell us more about Feed for Life Foundation and why you decide to go into this. Okay, um, Feed for Life Foundation was founded in 2014 in Nigeria after I came back from Ghana or after I finished my schooling. Thing was, um, the thing is, um, when I was pretty young, I lost someone to hunger. And since then, like, it's like 10 years now, I've been trying to do something different in Nigeria because I believe no child deserves to be hungry. You lost someone to hunger. Who that yeah. person be and how they are? Uh, what thing happened? Okay, what happened was, um, what happened is, um, that year, my dad was very popular in Ogun State. So whenever we do, whenever there's festive period, we try to feed people in the community. So that was how I met the boy then. So a few months later, I went back to the village and I heard that the boy died. And when I found out what happened, it was because he was trying to pick some things on the road, trying to eat and things like that. So that was actually what happened. So since then, I felt like no child, even though things are not okay in Nigeria, no child, deserve, no child deserves that. So that was what happened. Right. Now, Feed for Life Foundation, you said they're for four years now, 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 now they run this foundation. And I've seen all the clips of what they do on the screen. Uh, recently, would have been go where exactly, which area have been this? Um, Oko Baba Destitute Camp. Destitute Camp. Was, um, August. Last oh, no, August last year. Now, I've been go there, been feed people, give some kind of free medical attention to these people, uh, help support them. Now, I would like to know how would they take get, we know, say, uh, running a non-government, uh, no be easy something. Uh, a lot of funds they needed, a lot of materials they needed. How did they take fund this particular movement? Yeah, the foundation with? is fully funded by donation. Mm -hmm. We have people in Nigeria who believe in what we do, and every month some of them give us something to give out to children. And also we have people that at the, um, every time we have a project, they give out things. So, and another thing is we have some corporate organizations who believe in what we do as well, who give out their promotional materials and a whole lot of stuff for the foundation. Let me speak with Onye now. Onye, tell us, what will be the things one they do as regards to this Feed for Life Foundation? Do you just give them food or do you help to? And just tell us some of the things that one they do. Um, we don't only give them food. Like the last program we had now was um, a vocational thing. We trained them on different things. We had to come meet with volunteers, like I'm the volunteer manager. We brought different people in to give them different skills. Skills on what? Um, in the last one we did was on shoe making, bead making, clothing, and a lot of things. And, you know, after the program, we gave them some capital to start with. Just the, we had three winners, the first person, second, and third, just a prize. So they can be on their own to get things for themselves and also help people around. All right, now following, uh, you know, following up on that question, now after when I don't go to these places, I don't try to support these people, follow up on a very, very huge something. When they get the chance or the time or the opportunities to go back to these communities to see how well these people don't fare, because like you don't, you don't talk, say when they give them money, they give them some vocational training. training. So to go back, go check whether people don't use this training, when I don't give them, take help improve themselves. Because uh, as the, the Chinese saying is, uh, you know, give a man a fish, you are feeding for a day, mm -hmm. uh, teach him how to fish and uh, well, you know the rest. Um, mm -hmm. What we do, after the vocational training, a mm. month after, one of them called me. I have shoes to sell. Mm. When he called me, I was even surprised because I was not expecting him to like, start immediately like that. Mm. He told me he has two shoes to sell, I should help him. So what we actually do is, when, okay, last one we did soap training. We help them package their goods out and help them sell it. Mm. So that is like motivation for them. We don't just give them money and leave them. We have, like, we have a team um, who do um, multi, um, monitoring and evaluation. So they go back there and see what they are doing with their money. And also, we try after the training, we spoke to all of them. This is what you can do when you need help. This is who you should call, and things like that. So most of them call back. And some that didn't, we go back there, what is going on? What can we do to help? And things like that. So And there's a particular um, location we went to at Makoko. They call every month. And we make sure that, because there's a school there, um, a public school, where we go back there, we give them things, books, um, books, pen, and things like that. So we don't just 
go to a community and live there. We don't do that. We go back there to see what, we have to make an impact. We don't just feed and go. Because there are a lot of foundations out there now that what they do is one, once they feed the child, they just leave them, that is it. Mm. So, but they ask you like, after feeding them for, the, for a day, what next? Mm. Because you can't, expect, you can't expect a particular food to be okay, like to, like to, to fill their belly for a long time. So mm. what we do is after we give them the food, we go back there and see what we can do. This year now we are trying to look into the education sector. Instead of just feeding, we want to do more for the kids. All right, Onye, I beg, I just want to know, how Nate they identify these communities? Because I know Sona, they actually go different communities. She mentioned Makoko. I will not, I wait to be the criteria where they take before our face go that community. There's no criteria. Once we just know, okay, these people are lacking things, we make an inquiry, we check online and all. We go into the community, we meet with the rulers, the traditional heads and all. We want to come in and do this and all. We would like our foundation to feed, not feeding alone, just to take part of things, to, you know, curb, um, to eliminate poverty and all. You just go in there then we we'll do that. It's not that you have a criteria. So it can be any community? Yes. Yeah. Any so community at all? It's like, I feel like it's a low earning income. So it is not just like, maybe you cannot just go to Lekki and feed them. Yeah, no, we have to go to somewhere with, like, what are your challenges? What are you guys facing? What can we do to help? Yeah. There was, um, before we fed them at Okuba, they said there was, um, they were having challenges of um, drainage and some other stuff. Okay, we look at the video right now. Look at the, how they play all places. Mm -hmm. We went there, we went there with, um, a llama truck, pack all the refuse in the old community, swept the old place, clean the old community before we did anything. Is this so operation only in Lagos? Since no, 2014? No, no. Okay. We Which other states don't enter? Meduguri. 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 This year we are going to, this January, that is next week, we'll be going to Ogun State as well. So we've been to Meduguri, we've, we've been to the IDP camp at Meduguri, we've, okay. we gave them food. Right now we're trying to like look into what we can do in education, edu educational sec in the education sector. I also see if we can actually build, because most of them, they, they learn under the sun. I'm trying to see if we can build a shade for them where it will be conducive to learn. In so Medigree? Yes, in Medigree, and also in Lagos, yeah. Right, quickly, I want to ask, um, for most of these, uh, you know, these places where I don't go, where, where living conditions are very poor, um, what would be the common thing where we don't say, they, the thing where they know say they common amongst most of these communities <laughs> where uh, you know, don't face, where we say, if the government has a chance to listen to you and say, okay, we want to speak to this non-government organization, hear from them, see what we feel do, based on what they don't see. What are the things, the basic things, the common things where you don't see for these communities, where you could like put out there, say, now nah, the kind of things where these people need? Um, I think what most of them need is, is like, you know, we all know what's going on in Nigeria, job opportunities. Most of them, they are trying to earn a living. So anything they see, they do. And that aside, um, they, don't even care, they don't even care about their hygiene as long as they are eating and they are living. So what I think the government should do is they should go to these areas and see if they can bring people out. Like vocational training will really, really, really help because there are a lot of beggars in Nigeria. Most of them is not because they are too lazy to work or anything, but because of discrimination on dis disabled and everything, that is also going on. So if, we, if they can actually create jobs for this for these are people. Are they really ready to work? Because I yes. don't see cases where by, is, um, some people go go community, train them, give them money to start up. But these people are not going to use the money, they start up. They're actually willing to work because the last training we had with them, I saw people that were really ready to work, ready to learn, ready to do things, okay. to get things to get things for themselves and their family. So I feel if they get empowered by the mm. government, they will really make use of it and it's going to help them big time. So if anyone wants to support your, your foundation, how they fit with you, how can they, just tell us the different platforms okay, where they yeah, fit we have, you. We have, um, we have a website, feedforlife.org. We, we are also on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. As Feed for Life. Yes, Feed for Life Foundation. So once you just look for it, you see us. All right. Thank you very much. So you know, don't join us finally. Uh, Yesunde and... Uh, on your way. On Sorry, I keep forgetting their name. All right, yes, and on your way, members of Feed for Life Foundation, a non government organization, we don't decide. So then they go to different communities to help support people where they live in poverty. Uh, thank you so much, Yonadon Jonas, once again, thank and we so uh, wish the foundation all the best. Going to, to enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos, when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.